one of the first close U.S. allies that was offended and yelled at and reportedly hung up on by the new administration, by the new president, uh, was, was the Prime Minister of Australia. You might remember President Trump was in a conversation with the Prime Minister of Australia. Uh, things turned heated for a reason that was never quite clear, and President Trump reportedly hung up on him in the middle of their first conversation. The Prime Minister of Australia has a name. His name is Malcolm Turnbull. It's not that hard. Turnbull. Malcolm Turnbull. That's his name. The president had a very cordial conversation with Prime Minister Trumbull. His name is not Trumbull, it's Turnbull. Just those two syllables, Turnbull. While he has respect for the, for the Australian people, and respect for Prime Minister Trumbull. This is not actually that hard, but, but the White House spokes, it's, it's Turnbull. But right away, from the very beginning, it was clear the White House spokesman could not manage this. Prime Minister Trumbull, and respect for Prime Minister Trumbull. His name is not Trumbull, his name is Turnbull. There were these early little signs that maybe even the kind of easy stuff like this was going to be a problem. Because it, it turns out it's not even just names, it's when you spell stuff out too. Literally acronyms are even hard, even short acronyms. He receives an intelligence briefing and the PBD every day. The president receives a PDB every day, not a PBD. It's the president's daily brief, not the president's briefly, 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 BVD. President's daily brief, PDB. But the White House spokesman cannot manage that. He receives an intelligence briefing and the PBD every day. He received the PBD. He does get the PBD every day. It's not the PBD, it's the PDB. It's the president's daily brief. It stands for a thing. And then there was the time when he was trying to talk about the terrorist attack in Orlando. It happened in Orlando. Orlando is a totally different place than Atlanta, which is what he kept saying instead. What do we say to the family that, that loses somebody of a terrorist, to whether it's Atlanta or San Bernardino or the Boston bomber? I don't think you have to look any f further than the families of, in, that were, uh, of the Boston Marathon in Atlanta, in San Bernardino. Whether you're talking about San Bernardino, Atlanta, when he says Atlanta over and over again, there isn't a terrorist attack in Atlanta that he's talking about. He's trying to talk about Orlando, but it keeps coming out Atlanta over and over and over again. He later cleared that up, but not before the... And now today, it's World War II 101, as failed by the spokesman for the President of the United States. I know you heard about this today, but have you actually heard the thing itself? Because this isn't just mispronouncing something. This is the full-blown blossoming of something that appears to be a thought. What makes you think that, at this point, he's going to pull back in his support for President Assad and for the Syrian government right now? I think a couple things. You, you look, we didn't use chemical weapons in World War II. You know, you had a, you know, someone as despicable as Hitler who didn't even sink to the to the to using chemical weapons i'm not going to go ahead and spell out the history here of hitler gassing millions of people to death in world war ii obviously you know that history everybody knows that history seven-year-olds are are too young probably to watch this show but seven-year-olds know that history right but this is our white house now that was the statement today. Do you, clear, do you care to clarify, sir? Were you, were you talking about someone, something other than Hitler, maybe? Do you want to clear this up? I just want to give you the opportunity to clarify something you said that seems to be Thank getting you. some traction right now. Uh, quote, Hitler didn't even sink to the level of using chemical weapons. What did you mean by that? I, I think when you come to sarin gas, uh, there was no, he was not using the gas on his own people the same way that a shot is doing. I mean, there was clearly. I, I, I understand yes. your point. Thank you. I, I thank you. I appreciate that. There was not in the in the. He brought him into the to um, to the Holocaust Center. I understand that. The Holocaust Centers. He brought them into the Holocaust Centers. And when he says not using gas on his own people, by which you mean the people Hitler gassed by the millions weren't his own own people. Who's people? I mean, this is an attempted historical reference gone very, very, very wrong, clearly. 
but what it's about in the present, what this historical reference is about now, is also a problem here. He was not using the gas on his own people the same way that Ashad is doing. The same way that what is doing now? That who? What? The same way that Ashad is doing. Ashad. That's one of his attempts today to say Bashar al-Assad. That was one of his tries. Here's another try. No, I don't see a future Syria um, that has Basad al-Ashar as, as the leader of that government. Basad al-Ashar. His name is Bashar al-Assad. The White House spokesman later went on CNN, still couldn't manage even that part of it, still. There's no way that I can see a stable and peaceful Syria with Bashar al-Assad uh, uh, al in, in charge. Bashar al-Assad, I know you've mispronounced his name a few times, uh, but uh, it's Bashar al-Assad. Bashad al-Assir was, was the attempt there. Talking is hard. Everybody gets tripped up sometimes. But this is the person whose job it is to speak for the White House. And he, he can't even do it in print, let alone out loud. Uh, seriously, after initially stating that Hitler didn't use chemical weapons, that Hitler, okay, okay, well, at least he didn't gas his own people, that Hitler only did the gassing of whoever he gassed in the Holocaust centers, after that happened out loud, look at this. This is how they tried to clean it up in print. The White House put out this written clarifying statement at 2.47 p.m. from the press secretary. In no way was I trying to lessen the horrendous nature of the Holocaust, comma. However, I was trying to draw a contrast of the tactic of using airplanes to drop chemical weapons on innocent people. When you say innocent people, do you... Okay, no, let's try that again. So then... Um, a few minutes later, this is uh, nine minutes later, from the press secretary. In no way was I trying to lessen the horrendous nature of the Holocaust, comma, however, I was trying to draw a contrast of the tactic of using airplanes to drop chemical weapons on population centers. Okay? You want to leave it there? You sure that's where you want to leave it? Uh, nope, uh, sorry, no, another written clarification. 10 minutes later, this one time stamped 3.06 p.m. from the press secretary. In no way was I trying to lessen the horrendous nature of the Holocaust, period. I was trying to draw a distinction of the tactic of using airplanes to drop chemical weapons on population centers. Any attack on innocent people is reprehensible and inexcusable. So that makes three different written tries in 19 minutes. Anything else? Or are we done with this now? Oh, no, not done. Not done, it turns out. I needed to make sure that I clarified uh, and, and not was any, in any way, shape, or form any more of a distraction from the president's decisive action in Syria and the attempts that he's making to destabilize the region. The attempts that he's making to what? White House spokesman today not wanting to distract from President Trump's efforts to destabilize the region. Any more of a distraction from the president's decisive action in Syria and the attempts that he's making to destabilize the region. Talking is hard. Some people are better at talking than others. I talk for a living on TV, for example. I'm not great at it. I know for sure that I could not last five minutes as a spokesperson for the White House. Never. Couldn't do it. Most people couldn't do that. But some people can. Why is he doing it? Just a transfixing series of blunders today from the White House on an incredibly serious subject. And it's only made worse by the fact that it's actually not just the freaking spokesman. Today, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was at the G7 meeting in Italy. You might remember that this group used to be called the G8 before they kicked Russia out for invading Ukraine and the G8 became the G7. Rex Tillerson flew today from the G7 to Moscow, supposedly to take this very hard line with Russia. But before he got on the plane to Russia, he managed to pry this out of his own mouth. Why should U.S. taxpayers care about Ukraine? Quote, with one offhand remark, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson left European diplomats befuddled at a gathering in Italy. Quote, why should U.S. taxpayers be interested in Ukraine? Tillerson asked. Yeah, who 
cares about Ukraine? American people clearly do not care about Ukraine. Now I'm off to go tell Russia what a hard line we're taking with them after they invaded Ukraine, because that's so important to us. Maybe the White House spokesman can walk that one through its paces. Clarify it. Spell it, maybe. Even on the most serious issues on Earth, this White House, this administration, can make itself the center of attention just by sheer virtue of how disastrously, distractingly inept they can be at even the simplest things. But if that makes you feel less funny haha and more funny sick, um, there is a little bit of a cure. There is a cure for that despair. It's called democracy. And we are having a little outbreak of it tonight. And that story's next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.